Hey everybody, Neil Malik from Knack Training here, bringing another everyday office video. And in today's video, I want to illustrate how we can create a pivot table from three separate tables in just a few seconds. So you can see here that I have three tabs for January, February, and March. And one way that we could work with this is we could decide to copy and paste these together in order to make a pivot table. But there's a faster way, and it's using Power Query. The first thing we've got to do is go to each of these individual months, click onto the list that's there, and convert it into a table. If you go to the Insert tab at the top of the screen, you can choose Insert Table right here, or as you can see from the little pop-up, Control-T is the shortcut to do the same thing. So I click on Table, and after I turn this into a table, I'll just want to make sure that I give it a name that I will recognize later. All of my tables get named TBL and then whatever the information is. So I'll put in here Jan Sales. And you can see what I would do for February. Click on the data, click on the Insert tab table, and name it TBL Feb Sales. And then finally with March. TBL MAR sales. Now, unlike other exercises where I've used Power Query in the past, I'm not actually going to refer to this from outside the workbook, nor am I going to click directly on the table and on the data tab use from table arrange. Instead, in this instance, I'm going to start from a blank query. And I'm going to use a little bit of the M language to get into what's happening in this spreadsheet. Before I do it, though, I'll just make a quick sheet here for the pivot table where all of our stuff will live. So again, I go to my Data tab, go to Get Data, and then choose Launch Power Query Editor. And if I had any queries already, they would be listed in here, but I don't. So once I'm in Power Query, I go to New Source, go to other sources and tell it that I want a blank query. And the starting point of our query is an M function. So everything that happens in Power Query is actually written as a function in this language called M, um, but we haven't really looked at it yet in the course of these videos. So this will be our first starting point. If I type in an equal sign into the formula bar up at the top, I begin with the EXCEL, and notice that it gives me this helper text as a pop-down. Right there, that's what I want, Excel.CurrentWorkbook. So I'm just going to hit Tab to accept that, and notice it gives me the further advice of you should have open and close parentheses, and then hit Enter. And just like that, it tells me that I have these three tables, TBL Jan sales, Feb sales, and Mar sales. Perfect. Now just to zoom out here for a second, this is where if I had more tables in my spreadsheet, I'd want to make sure to hit this drop down menu and filter out any of the tables that weren't things that were supposed to be included. Right here, I'll go to the content pop-out arrows. And notice right here that I am bringing in the sale date information, product information, quantity, price, and total information from all those tables. I'm going to uncheck the checkbox for this prefix functionality. That's only really useful when I have different columns coming in from different places. I want to keep track of them. I'll click OK. And just like that, I have the appended together information of all our sales from January, February, March, April, May. But notice here that I haven't yet converted each of these into the type of information I want to have. So I hit the little drop down menus next to the names of all the columns and make sure to specify what type of information is in there. Doing that for each of those. And this is, again, a currency value. And if I wanted to, notice that really just having this column for the name of the original table could also give me some additional benefit. But really, if I wanted to know that the sales were in January, February, or March, I could easily go over here to the sale date column, go to the Add Column tab at the top of the screen, 
go to the date drop down menu and look for the name of the month right there. And so I could add real January, February, and March to my data if that was relevant. So I'll go over here and I'll remove the name of that table. Maybe that's unnecessary. And uh, maybe I'll put this all the way over on the far left so I can categorize the sales by month. Now at this stage in the process, I just go to my home tab, close and load, and load it directly into a pivot table as we were talking about before, and directly into the existing worksheet that I created before I started this whole process. Hit OK, and just like that, all of the data from the three separate tables are included in here. And I can see this by taking total, putting it here, taking product, putting it here, maybe sorting by largest to smallest, maybe change the number formatting so it looks nicer. And then if I wanted to see the sales by any of the individual months, notice I have that column name, month name right there. And I can go up here to my insert slicer and slice it by the name of the month. There's my January sales, my February sales, and my March sales, or all three of them together.